Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please take home a bulletin today or visit the parish website or Facebook page for information on upcoming events and important guidelines for attending Mass. In preparation for Lent, please bring your blessed palms to church and place them in the collection bin located in the gathering area. Save the date. The Knights of Columbus Lenten Fish Fry will be carry out only every Friday during Lent beginning Friday, February 19. Ladies, are you looking for a spiritual Lenten retreat? Join the Ladies of Peace Ministry for meetings with Mary on February 27th from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Guest speaker is Mike Scherschlich. Registration is limited. For your convenience, offertory baskets are located at the back of church. We are grateful for your prayers and continued financial support to the parish. Masks are required while you are in church and must be properly fitted over both your nose and mouth and are worn throughout Mass. If you do not wear a mask, you are asked to move to the cry room before we begin. Communion is only distributed on the hand during Mass. Anyone requiring it on the tongue will receive it after Mass is done. Please remember that everyone needs to exit the pew be, uh, during communion to maintain social distancing. If you are not receiving communion, please cross your hands over your chest for a blessing or exit to the gathering area until Mass is over. Our intention for the Mass is Cecil Blignot. Our presider is Father Greg Hamas. Please stand. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you sovereign Lord. Mighty King, whom angels worship, Father, by your church adored. All creation shows your glory, heaven and earth draw near your throne. Singing, holy, 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 Lord of hosts and God alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome. Uh, we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time, and we hear of Jesus' healing. We all need healing, and as we begin our Mass, healing from our sins. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. 
For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast. For an obligation has been imposed on me. And woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense. But if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, 
I offer the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my right to the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak I became weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, so to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak, because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, you might have heard there's this thing called the Super Bowl, and probably a lot of people are going to watch it. Do you know how many people will watch the Super Bowl today? Uh, More than are watching this Mass right now. (laughs) Uh, They say about 100 million people, somewhere around that number, will watch the Super Bowl. But that doesn't hold a candle to other uh, events. There are, there are bigger events that are watched on TV. You know what the most watched uh, event uh, wa- uh, on, ever watched on TV is, according to what I read on Wikipedia, it's the Summer Olympics. Uh, about three and a half billion people tune in each time, or at least the last couple Uh, Summer Olympics. Now, I don't think that's fair because that's a whole couple, few weeks or so. I think they add all that up, all the viewers, but a lot of people watch that. Also in that league, in the over three billion, something called FIFA World Cup soccer, something about, I don't know what that is, but (laughs) I'm not, I'm not into soccer. Um, And after Summer Olympics and the World Cup, um, 
I think come things like Winter Olympics, a couple of Muhammad Ali fights, and then uh, on the list is Baywatch, of all the odd things. So uh, if you wonder what's wrong with our world, well, maybe there it is. But you know what? Uh, bringing big crowds out, something everybody would want to see, but they wouldn't they want to be there uh, when Jesus heals. We heard in the gospel, uh, it was after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. How many people came? A few? A couple uh, dozens? How many? Said the whole town was gathered at the door. Everybody. The whole town. I think that would be true today. If Jesus was here healing, everybody in the world would want to come. Because we all need healing. Each of us uh, probably has an ailment, an illness, or maybe we have a demon in our life of whatever sort. We certainly have a loved one, uh, somebody close to us who has a struggle. But if we're honest, I think we all have something we need healing from. Healing is the theme today. From our first reading of a Job who needed healing, Life is a drudgery, and he was really suffering. To our psalm, which said, The Lord heals the brokenhearted. Uh, to our gospel, Jesus heals. That's our theme. Some say that if you look at the gospels in their entirety, about a third of it, or some say even more, is about Jesus healing. That's a lot. It means it's a major theme. Why does Jesus heal? The ultimate answer, why does God do anything, is always love. God loves us. So Jesus, he loved people, he had compassion, and he healed them. That brings up a follow-up question in many people's lives. Uh, why didn't he heal me? Or why didn't he heal this other loved one. Uh, we'll hold on to that. We'll mention that at the end. But everything God does is out of love. Another reason Jesus heals is he brings the kingdom, the real kingdom. He is the king. He's Lord. And in his kingdom, uh, there's no death. There's no sin. There's no room for the devil and the demons. Or illness. Uh, so as he walks on earth, the kingdom is already here. And uh, so he heals. That's what happens in his kingdom. It could be a little bit uh, of signs that prove who he is, although I think this one's a little iffy, because certainly uh, Jesus does this for sure for once when they lowered the paralytic through a roof. Jesus first forgave his sins, which teaches us the soul needs healing first. That's got the priority. But then as they said, oh, how can he do that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus says, well, uh, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise and walk? But so that you may know I have authority to forgive sins, rise and walk. So he kind of does the healing miracle to prove he could forgive sins. But really, uh, another case is the opposite. He goes to Nazareth, his hometown, and he doesn't prove himself. People are skeptical of him, and it says he did very little healing there. So he's not really about proving himself so much, but really about uh, loving us, bringing the kingdom. And for those who have faith, he did bring healing. Well, um, how can, we, how can we get healing? And I said it's really through, uh, he heals because he loves us. So I'm going to go with the theme of love, uh, partially because we're in the love season. Uh, next week is Valentine's Day. And uh, the, I think today, is it today the 7th? Uh, the 7th through the 14th is National Marriage Week. And uh, made me think of what I like to teach engaged couples about is the five love languages. So you can think about this about three different ways. One, 
we should love each other. And these, I love these five love languages. It works for anybody. Uh, second, we need to experience the love of God. God loves us in these ways. But also, I think we can get access to healing through these five love languages. So the five love languages, are it's not really a biblical thing. Dr. Gary Chapman wrote a book. It's recent days. And... Um, I, I like it. I think it's, I think it's helpful. And uh, we'll walk through each of the languages. The first language is words of affirmation. For some people, that's really their, the way they want to be loved. It's through words. Words that um, say I love you or compliment them, affirm them. The way we want to be loved is also kind of the way we naturally love others. You might identify with that. I'm kind of iffy in that language, maybe middle ground there. Did Jesus love us with words? Yes, he preached. His, his words affirmed. When he preached, he healed. Those two things go together. Even in our gospel, talked about his preaching along with his healing. I think that teaches us that his, Jesus, the words of Jesus heal. And that's so true. Scripture, the word of God, can heal us. Innumerable stories of people who would listen or read the Bible and a scripture verse would suddenly touch their heart and change their lives, like a healing, sometimes an addiction or um, just a, a big change they needed. The word of God did it. Words of affirmation. It's God's love for us, and it can open up healing, the word of God. Interesting, Jesus casts out demons, and what does he do? He silences them, because demons don't have words of affirmation. They don't affirm us. They're, wor they're words of um, whatever they are, the opposite of affirmation, of destruction, putting down. Sometimes we have that voice, that negative voice. That's the, the demon voice. It needs to be silenced. Uh, maybe we need healing from that voice. Words of affirmation. Second love language, and that's in about 23% of the population, by the way, uh, identifies with that as their love language. Second language of, of love, acts of service. Some people just, when they love somebody, they mow the grass for them or cook a dinner. Or they do something. They serve. Uh, so I pretty strongly identify with it. I think it's probably my number two. Uh, about 20% of the population uh, loves like this. Service is in our readings too. Of course, uh, in general, Jesus will say, the Son of Man came to serve, not be served. He serves us. He washes the feet of the disciples. Jesus is a humble servant. But even in our gospel, he heals Peter's Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and what does it say? As soon as he healed her, it said she immediately got up and waited on them. And the word for waited on them is diac diaconia, which we get the word deacon from. What does deacon mean? It's to serve. She was healed, and then she serves. Uh, they're, they're, they're connected too. If God does heal us, it's not just for me, oh, I'm good now. Live it up. Every gift is always to be shared. She starts to serve. You know, I think service in general is healing. If I ever get a little down, there's nothing better than serving another person and just seeing that it helped them. What lifts our spirits up? When we serve, there's a joy to it. And service heals us from maybe the biggest wound of pride selfishness. My world's about me. We need healing. We got to get out and serve. Um, so maybe we can get healing through service. Uh, our third love language is receiving gifts. Not my love language. I'm not a very good gift giver. But some people, that's what they like. Very thoughtful gifts. Um, God gives us gifts all the time. His grace, that's a pure gift. Do we receive them? 
Jesus. So if we want to identify where is it in our readings today, Jesus is the gift, the gift of the Father to us. Where is that gift today? Well, his word, but especially the Eucharist is a pure gift to us. It's a, I love you from God. How do we get healing? Through God's grace. But yeah, especially most powerfully through the Eucharist. Or really almost all the sacraments have healing elements. From confession to anointing of the sick. Uh, certainly the Eucharist. God gives healing through his grace. Uh, so gifts our third language, I say uh, 18% of the population. So they're all about equal, about a fifth, fifth of people identify with these love languages. Our fourth love language uh, is quality time. 20% identify with this one. I'd say this is my number one. In quality time, when we love somebody or just show appreciation, affection, we give them time, kind of attentive time. And Jesus did this. Certainly he spent 33 years on earth with us. That's quality time. But even in the gospel, when he healed people, it said he cured many who are sick. The word for cure in the Greek is therapeo. Therapeo. You hear it, the English word therapy. Therapy. Which has a sense that it takes a little time. When we do any kind of therapy, it's not just an instant quick fix, but it, therapy is time. And I imagine, we, we don't know for sure, Jesus could heal in an instant, but I'm imagining it this way, that he spent a little time with each person he healed, and he gave them their, his entire attention They say the saints did that. When you met Mother Teresa or Pope John Paul II one-on-one, you felt a presence that they were locked on to you and that you were like the only person in the world. That's Jesus. He spent that time with each person. And uh, that is healing when we spend time with God. What did Jesus do after he healed? He went and spent time with his father very early in the morning. He rose and prayed our prayer time. That's why we do the Eucharistic adoration of holy hours. We need that Eucharist therapy, that time with God. It brings healing. And it's a way to love and be loved. Our, this is our fifth, the fifth one. Okay, yeah, fifth love language. Uh, it's a way a lot of people like to be loved is physical touch. of folks uh, like this, so um, uh, holding a hand, a hug, not my love language, by the way, (laughs) so don't don't hug me, I always feel awkward about it, not that I don't like it, I just feel awkward about it, so, uh, and um, Jesus does this one too, how did he heal Simon's mother-in-law, said he approached grasped her hand and helped her up. He often uses touch and healing, especially, I think, of the lepers. Lepers have this contagious skin disease. If I were Jesus, I'd be like, okay, I'll heal you from way back here. (laughs) But no, Jesus goes right up to the lepers and touches them. Nobody did that. Jesus did. And they probably felt the love. He touched me. And many of his healings were by touch. uh, It said in some of the other passages that people just tried to touch the hem of his garment or the tassel of his cloak. And it said as many people who has touched it were healed. Just to touch Jesus. Can we touch Jesus today? On the surface, it seems like, no, you know, he's, he's in heaven, blah, blah, blah. No. He gave us a way to experience the, the love of his touch and healing, and I already mentioned it, the Eucharist, touch, taste, and see. We get to touch Jesus, and he does bring healing powerfully in the Eucharist. 
those are the five love languages. We should love each other with those and experience God's love. But I think we can get healing. Maybe it's given you an idea. Okay, uh, what if we don't get healing? What does that mean? God doesn't love us. Our faith is weak. We're not holy. No, I don't think it's any of those things. If you look at the saints, they were holy. Uh, God loved them. They loved God. Uh, the saints in general are a sickly bunch. Every life of the saint I read, they often say they struggle with illness or this or this or this. So many of them had illnesses and infirmities often throughout their life. So it's not about that. Something else is going on. Um, to be healed is a gift from God, but sometimes to not be healed is also a gift. A harder one to receive. But if God gives us strength to bear it, there's holiness and a gift in that. Uh, Father Renero Cantalamesa just recently made a cardinal papal preacher for the last three popes. Super insightful, holy guy. He said this, he said, health that has been recovered will one day be lost together with life. But the merit of having endured sickness patiently remains for eternity. If we get a healing on earth, a physical healing, we're going to lose it someday because we'll lose all our health when we die. It's just a temporary gift. But he says the gift that lasts is if God gives the gift to bear it patiently. That bears fruit eternally. That's the cross. And we heard it in the Alleluia verse. It said, uh, Jesus, uh, G Christ took away our infirmities. He bore our diseases. He bore them like he bore the cross. He bore all that to make it holy, to make it a channel of love that makes an eternal difference. And that's true for us as well. Sometimes we're not healed. It's a hard gift, but maybe it's an invitation to really follow Jesus, to take up our crosses. God's wanting to give the eternal gift. Again, hard, hard one sometimes. So let's pray. We can pray for healing in all things. Uh, we're not guaranteed to get it, but no harm and, and good to pray for it. How do we get healing? Those love languages, but especially the sacraments, the word of God, prayer. Let's trust in the love of God. No matter what, he loves us. And God's love is the only thing that will ultimately heal our world. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life for the world to come. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's love and praying for healing for us, our whole world, we lift up our prayers. For the church, that through our generous support of the Archbishop's call to share appeal, we may continue the work of Christ on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those called to leadership in the world, that they will work diligently to raise people from slavery in all its forms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community, that we may follow the Lord's example of ministry to all of God's people through the sharing of our time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially Jerry Arnold, Dennis Plumley, Rose Downey, Martina Worth, and Marlies Moore. May God's mercy and love bring them into his presence forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for healing for all those who need it. Uh, that we always may experience your love. Hear our prayers. We ask them all through Christ our Lord. and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. In the name of God, take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in your heart that he died for you. May the body of Christ 
be food for our souls and bring us to everlasting life. God's holy gifts for God's holy people come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in your heart that he died for you. May the blood of the Lord protect us from harm and mark us as God's beloved ones. God's holy gifts for God's holy people come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in your heart that he died for you. As the grain of the bread was gathered as one, may we who believe be bound by love. God's holy gifts, God's holy people, come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in your heart that he died for you. As the cup that we share is emptied for all, may we offer up our lives in love. God's holy gifts for God's holy people come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in your heart that he died for you. When we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we hold in our memory Christ the Lord. God's holy gifts for God's holy people come now to share the banquet of Christ. Feed on his love with faith and thanksgiving. Know in our hearts that he died for you. the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the bread, needed long to Full of joy, I read. 
received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the truth. If you follow close to me, you will know me in your heart, and my word shall make you free. I receive the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Jesus said, I am the life, far from whom no thing can grow, but receive this living breath. My spirit you shall know. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. I received the living God, and my heart is full of joy. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world, through Christ our Lord. And again, a reminder, we're in the, doing, still doing the Archbishop's Call to Share Appeal. Thank you for all who have responded. Uh, still time to support the bigger church. And many ministries are healing ministries. Also, next Saturday, uh, we have a, here a mini marriage retreat. Not too late to sign up. It'd be a great thing to do for your marriage. I uh, hope you have a, a, we have a, we have a great day with the events later in the day. It will be pleasing to us. Uh, and I hope you have a week where the Lord gives you the healing uh, that we most, most need. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. See?